Hello, I am very happy to welcome you another interview on The Guitar Channel. I am with Brian from the Leonardo Guitar Research Project, is that correct? That's right, that yeah. is correct. Thank so you. tell us everything, what the hell is that strange project name? Well, the name comes from uh, the uh, funding source that we had for the project. Mm -hmm. It's funded by the European Commission and originally it was under their Leonardo um, uh, pr uh, funding scheme. Okay. So that's where the original name comes mm -hmm. from. It's now funded under what's called the Erasmus Plus program. Okay. And uh, the Erasmus Plus is focused on uh, youth education and training and, and youth employment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we're getting the funding because we've got three uh, guitar making schools, one in Belgium, uh, which is where I'm from, one in the UK and one in Finland okay. that are working on this project mm -hmm. and we're using our students to build these guitars across the schools. Okay, nice. And what is the goal of the project? Well, really, we wanted to demonstrate that you can make guitars with non-tropical woods that are um, equally preferred in terms of sound preference mm -hmm. to their tropical wood counterparts. Mm -hmm. That's what we set out to demonstrate. Um, the, the, the background of it is very many of the um, uh, guitarists and, and uh, uh, guitar makers, they believe that uh, the very best guitars are only made with mm. tropical woods. Mm. And it's not the truth? And we don't believe that that was okay. the truth. Okay. <laughs> and there's also some uh, very important consequences of use of tropical woods mm -hmm. in terms of the destruction of rainforests. Um, the guitar makers are not the main cause of, of, of this, but uh, tropical woods generally are being used for, for building materials, flooring, uh, diaper products, wood pulp, and, and the forests are being cut down for uh, agricultural land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is having devastating consequences on the environment and for the lives of the indigenous people there. But the guitar building is industry is just a very small That's percentage very small of that, percentage right? Of but we can make a difference because uh, the guitar industry is very influential, so if we can show in the future that um, using sustainable, local, non-tropical woods, if we can show that is cool and uh, environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. uh, we can begin to change mindsets. And we'll change mindsets beyond that just for the guitar industry, okay. wherever these tropical woods are used. Mm -hmm. You know, what we'd like to see is in a few years' time that the tropical woods are actually considered rather like ivory is today. Okay. You know, you would not mm. want to buy an ivory product now. Mm. It's just not not the yeah, right thing to do. It's bad now. It's to bad new, yeah. and yeah. and we really need to 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 do this generally across the the, the whole of the of, of the world. Mm. World. And before we go further, uh, tell us what are the usual tropical woods. Uh, well, the, the the most common ones that are used in uh, in high end guitars yeah. are, are rosewoods, okay. uh, the mahoganies. These are for the backs and sides. Mm -hmm. The the traditional fingerboard is is ebony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so tell us about the scientific result you you saw on the, okay. the study. So in the across the three schools, we've made over thirty non tropical guitars, okay. and we compared um, those versus tropical counterparts, and we focused. On, on, on specifically 10 guitars that we made in the classical format, because the classical is really the, the stress test for us. Okay. Okay, that's where the belief is strongest. Mm. And so we, we tested 10 um, a, uh, classical guitars based on the, uh, the Torres FE19 model, and uh, with, with 10 different wood sorts, of non-tropical wood sorts, and we've compared those with five tropical wood guitars made with rosewood for the back mm. and sides. Mm -hmm. And we've tested in a variety of different test techniques with, with professional musicians, guitarists, yeah. with expert listeners, these are the people that have got a really trained musical ear, mm -hmm. and with live audiences, which we've done in two guitar festivals, one in Belgium in the Corda Factum uh, Guitar Festival this year, and one in Finland at the uh, Tampere Guitar Festival. And uh, the, the testing that we've done, we've done blind pair testing where uh, a musician or the audience have listened to two guitars being played but they've not been able to see the guitar. The mm -hmm. musician was blindfolded or the audience or listener were behind a screen. Um, and what we found in the blind testing, and we've got over 4,000 data points uh, uh, on this test research, was that under blind test conditions the sound preference of the non-tropical guitars was absolutely equal to the tropical guitars. It was 50-50 in preference. Okay. 
Now. So that means that when we listen, when we actually listen with our ears, it's impossible to, to distinguish. It's just well, a matter of you, taste, you right? Can, you, it's a matter of taste. You can distinguish differences, yeah. but in terms of the preference and the acceptance, they're mm -hmm. equally acceptable. Mm -hmm. Now. And and those are, excuse me to interrupt, those are uh, professional musicians, professional so musicians. not me, uh, not, professional no. musicians, professional trained musicians. musicians absolutely, absolutely, with professional right. musicians. Mm -hmm. We've then um, shown the guitars, they've, they've been able to see them, taken the blindfolds yeah, yeah, off, yeah. or the audience has been able to see them. Mm -hmm. We've explained what woods that we've used mm -hmm. in the production of these guitars, and then we've retested. And in the non-blind testing, where we've tested side-by-side, -side, yeah. pairs, the result changes drastically. Okay. It, on average, it goes from the 50-50 in the blind test yeah. to 25% preference for non-tropical, 75% preference for the tropical guitar. Okay, so, so we can major, see the bias. A uh. major, major fallback. <laughs> this is coming from two things. There's, 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 a, uh, there's preconceptions over really what constitutes a tone wood yeah, and the yeah. best tone woods. Mm -hmm. So people are coming with the belief that it has to be the, the rosewoods and the mahoganies, the mm -hmm. ebonies. And also from the... the um, the aesthetic preferences. A lot of people prefer a, a dark wood for the back yeah. and sides mm -hmm. or a black fretboard. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are driving it. Mm -hmm. nice. So you have an example mm -hmm. of a, a non-tropical wood guitar. So yeah, show a, it to the camera and is, how is it uh, with is a, uh, which wood? A, a classical guitar. Well, this, yeah. is, this is a European spruce for the top, but the the back and the sides. Uh, this is made with uh, chestnut. Okay, so okay. try to show it so it's very very nice but very light. Usually very, we very have light. darker woods yes. for, for the guitars. Yes. And then we are using um, Rabinia falsa uh, pseudo acacia for okay. the, uh, uh, the and, and for the uh, for the neck also the same material. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, it's a very nice guitar. But it's very different from the traditional guitars yeah. that you're used mm -hmm. to seeing. So that's one of the guitar which we are used the, uh, during the, the test. This is one of the guitars that was used during the test, Incredible. and it's been test versus a, a, a matched tropical version of, mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what was the reply from, for example, the guitar builders uh, here in uh, in Berlin? I've been um, uh, pleasantly surprised by the, the very, very positive reaction that we've yeah. been getting in Berlin. Um, in particular, I found that many of the guitar builders have actually used non-tropical uh, woods in their guitars, mm -hmm. but generally the customer is driving and asking for the tropical woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one uh, guitar builder, um, Andy Manson, that I, uh, from, from the UK, I was having a, uh, on the same table for a meal with him on Friday evening, and he said, um, if he uh, is asked to build a guitar and the customer is not specifying the wood, he always makes in, in English cherry. It's a beautiful sounding wood, it's a very nice looking wood, it's sustainable wood. Mm -hmm. But so often the customer is, is asking for a specific okay. tropical wood guitar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important to educate people it's, and to have this kind of it's uh, educating study. educating people and that's what we want to do. We, we, it's a journey really to begin to change mindsets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if we, if we can do this, uh, I think that's the important first step. We need to get um, ambassadors really, mm -hmm. musicians, well-known musicians who can be supportive of, uh, of the project and supporting using uh, uh, non-tropical woods in their guitars. We're going around, we do exhibitions, we do lectures, we want to go to uh, music schools or guitar building schools and educate younger people uh, just to begin to change the mindset at an early age that, that uh, what we're doing with the tropical woods now, it's not sustainable in the long term by any means. The, the rate of destruction of the tropical rainforests could see them totally disappear within the next 40 or 50 years. Yeah, so, so we're not going to have these tropical woods available yeah. to make the guitars. So we might as well prepare now for well the future. Now. We might yeah. as well prepare now for the future, yes. And uh, what are the future, what is the future or the next steps uh, of the well, project? We, we've got some additional funding from yeah. the European uh, Commission. Um, so in total, the, as I said, there's three guitar schools. There's four independent luthiers that we're working with as well in, okay. in Ireland, France, um, Italy and Spain mm -hmm. and what we want to do is we want to determine which are the most suitable woods for making these guitars in terms of uh, the workability properties how yeah. easy they are, are they to use mm -hmm. to make um, uh, the guitars secondly look at the aesthetic responsiveness of these different types of woods and what can we do how do these different woods take to French polishing uh, coloration staining um, oiling lacquering techniques mm -hmm. etc um, and, and look what we can do uh, to get really high level looking aesthetics with the woods because mm. the grain patterns are very good in, in many of them anyway but we just want to 
uh, see how far we can take that. Uh, the second thing that we need to do is to bring on a European supply of these woods. These woods are re readily available, but not as tone woods. Okay. So you can buy the wood, mm. but the, our wood suppliers don't generally have them in stock. So okay. we want to work with wood suppliers, mm. work with forest management people, and begin to develop a tone wood supply. So that, and, and, and from what I've picked up now from, uh, from this festival, there's a lot of people that would be interested in purchasing these woods as tone woods. But the so supply chain has to be in place. We have to put uh, the supply chain. But it's not a long-term uh, thing, this, because the trees are there. It's yeah, not growing yeah. trees. It is just getting them cut okay. in a form that we and can really use for making uh, guitars. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, oh, sorry, yeah, so sorry. there's a third aspect of the project, which is on education. Yep. So as, as I said in the uh, beginning, this Erasmus Plus program is around education of, of the youth across Europe. And so we're really trying to enhance the educational, um, uh, strengthen the educational curriculum mm -hmm. uh, across the guitar schools and also get the students, our best students, more connected with um, with work placements and study placements in master luthiers across Europe and, and have mentoring from them. Okay. So the, 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 they've got a broader education and also we increase their environmental awareness as part of their education. Mm -hmm. So as they go out into the profession in the future, they've got a broader skill set and they've got a, a, a much better environmental knowledge of what they're doing with the profession as they take it forward over the coming years. Okay, excellent. So if people want to know more about the project, they go to website and they can yes, add the result of the study uh, and everything. The website is leonardo-guitar-research.com. All okay. the results will be published on there. Mm -hmm. We have a, a network that is designed for anybody that's interested in making guitars with mm -hmm. um, sustainable non-tropical woods, whether they're student luthiers or master luthiers, whether um, uh, they're wood suppliers, just musicians, or anyone just with an interest in the environment, they can become part of the website, join up and, and follow the project okay. and contribute to it. Okay, good. Excellent. I'm very happy because I learned so many things. Thank you very okay, much, thank Brian. You. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank thank you, you very much indeed. Bye. 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 Bye.